supposed to know which is the right career for us? If we're to spend 40 to 50 hours a week, over 10,000 hours a year, we're going to want to choose a career that we're best at and one that we love. And with the average American changing their jobs up to seven times during their lifetime, finding the right career as soon as possible will contribute to better health and help you live a richer and fuller life. The right career is out there waiting for you, and I'm going to help you find it. I'm Freddie Cochran. Welcome to California Careers. Welcome to another edition of California Careers. I'm Freddie Cochran, your host. We're in Redondo Beach, California today, outside Bruckman Design, going inside to learn the career of architect. Let's go see how it's done. What is an architect? Uh, an architect is uh, the person responsible for the uh, design and not so much the construction, but the uh, putting together the pieces of electrical, mechanical, plumbing, design, structural. We're sort of the, uh, if it were a film, we'd be the director. Okay, so, so you, you're designing real property, right? Not personal property, but actually real estate. Real estate, yes. Correct? Okay, um, so can, if we get our, an architectural license, are there different sort of degrees or levels of the architectural license um, for, for different areas of real property? Or is it just all no, encompassing? No, once you, once you get an architectural license, theoretically, you're able to do anything. Okay. Now, whether that's actually true is, is not really, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't really happen that way. So um, there's so much to learn. It takes an entire career to get to a point where you sort of have it all in your head. Okay. And... Uh, I remember when I was in walking with cap and gown at USC to graduation, and my professor looked at me and shook my hand and said, congratulations, you now know about 2% of what you need to know to be an architect. <laughs> oh, no. Wow, that's how he sent you out into the workforce. And I, and I said, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> wow. wow, okay. And so architecture, as a profession is is one of constant learning okay constant things change you know we have an earthquake mm -hmm. and all of a sudden there's all brand new seismic requirements there's energy now we're we're trying to cut down on energy use so there's green construction okay. constant learning okay. process so an architect um, is licensed to draft the plans for Residential, commercial, industrial, Everything. all levels of real property. Yep. Wow, Everything. very cool. Does that include um, the actual construction of maybe bridges or marine type, like docks or, or things like that? Or I, is that outside the scope? You of could. Uh, I mean, I would, 99% of architects, if they were to design that, we, could, we would be designing it in terms of what we wanted it to look like. Mm -hmm. uh, 99.9% .9 of architects would hire structural engineers okay. and marine engineers and you know whatever bridge engineers to try and figure out how it's going to stand up. Okay. But if you if someone hired me to say I want you to design a really nice looking bridge, mm -hmm. I could say okay it's going to look like this and and then turn it over to my structural engineer and he'd say whether it could you know okay we'll need to have concrete here or whatever it is. Interesting. So you're taking, you're sitting, we're sitting here in your office at Bruckman Designs. Uh, you actually, you sit down with a piece of paper and, and draft out how the property is going to be either renovated or created. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the stuff we do now is on computer. It's on computer, okay. Um, I don't do, I haven't done any physical drawing of, of hard contract documents in probably 15 years. Okay. So, and, and the big change is uh, back in the day, everything was hand drawn. Okay. So you would literally be sitting there with a pencil drawing wow. what you wanted it to be and all of the details. Okay. Uh, today, you have three dimensional design programs that you can rotate the stuff, and everything wow. is built inside the computer 3D. Oh, very cool. So, so the whole, you know. When I was first in school, you'd figure out what you wanted it to look like, and then you'd draw the plans, but you never quite knew 
uh, what it was going to look like. It was all in your head, mm -hmm. unless you sat down and built a model and then looked at the model. Okay. Well, what software is it that you're using? You this is a program uh, Autodesk makes. It's called Revit. Okay. It's uh, three-dimensional. Uh, it's called Building Information Management wow. Program. Very cool. And uh, it, it allows you to basically build the building from foundations to you can put electrical, you can put air conditioning ducts in, you can put steel beams, you can put everything, doors, windows, doorknobs, whatever you want to put. Wow. Stick it on, build it in the computer, and, it, and it'll spit out drawings that you, can, that you can give to a contractor and you can go out and build them. Very cool. That was my next question. Are the relationships that you're building, um, are they with um, either like a homeowner or a general contractor? Typically. Could be both. Could mm -hmm. be both. Um, I get a lot of work from just, um, you know, people want to add a bedroom. Mm -hmm. You know, the baby's coming, and mm -hmm. and we need to add a bedroom. And then I've got clients that are are uh, designing shopping centers and office buildings and things wow. like that. So Very it's cool. whatever walks. Some sometimes stuff walks in the door that 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 uh, you haven't done before mm -hmm. it becomes a challenge to try and learn how to all the things that you need to do to make that happen. How does, um, say, a homeowner go about funding an architect? Um, is there financing out there available through the banks, or is this, how, how, is, how are you typically paid? How are generally, uh, generally, I don't believe it's, it's in, included in a construction loan, mm -hmm. although you can sometimes roll that in depending on, and I, I'm not, really that well acquainted with mm -hmm. real estate and, and banking and stuff like that. But okay. I would say most of the time my clients will uh, probably pay me with cash they've already got on hand. Okay. So uh, it's not always the case, but. Okay. Um, I wanted to, we'll talk about the salaries later, but I'm curious as to the costs of a particular building. Is there um, a mathematical sort of percentage if the home is worth or the, the project is about I don't know, two hundred thousand dollars to create a new bedroom or an add-on to the house. Do you make sort of a percentage, or how how are your fees calculated? Um, you would have to know upfront what the client is looking for. Okay. So there are some clients that are they want you to design exactly you know what what the doorknob is, mm -hmm. and there are others that are just saying let's just give me the box. And I'll tell you, I'll paint it. You know, we'll paint it ourselves, and you know, okay. all we all we need to do is get you get a permit, get the guy to build the building, and then we're going to go to town and we'll decorate it. Okay. But there, I have other clients that are that are, uh, you know, I you choose the tile and you choose the cabinets and you choose, you know. Wow. So, depending on what a client wants, mm -hmm. you would you would obviously spend more time designing something that was that was more uh, unique and more complicated, as opposed to people that are just saying, just give me a box and go away. <laughs> <laughs> that makes so. sense. Let's switch gears for a minute. Let's talk about the education required to become an architect. Okay. What, what do we need to do as far as schoolwork is concerned? Uh, generally speaking, you, you would need a uh, bachelor's degree and an advanced degree, uh, right. a master's or a professional, um, like a Bachelor of Architecture type of thing, okay, uh, or a master's degree, mm -hmm. or or beyond. Okay, so that's that's the minimum, and I don't even believe a four-year degree is any more. And I could be wrong about this, mm -hmm. but I'm not even sure a four-year degree will qualify you to take the exam. Mm -hmm. But okay, I, I, back I, when you did it, what what was required? Back when I did it, you could do that. You okay, could, you could take a four-year degree and add uh, intern. I think four years, I had to do four years of intern underneath an architect. Okay. And that made up the difference for oh, not yeah. having the professional degree. Okay, did, do you have, a ba you have a bachelor's degree? Yeah. You do have a bachelor's degree, and then you went on to get um, sort of internship experience from a licensed architect. Right. Okay, so, so four and four? Yeah, I actually, w let me think. Um, I got out of school, uh, I think I was, worked six years. Okay. Under an architect before I took wow. the exam. Is that right? I mean, I could have taken it sooner. Yeah. But I was in no hurry. I was, I was learning my craft, so I wasn't about to be the guy signing the drawings. I was just a, you know. Okay. 
But today, um, you recommend that they get a bachelor's degree and an advanced degree. Yes. Um, and definitely. then go on to the licensing body, which is, who is the licensing uh, body? California Architects Board. California Architects Board. Okay. Let's talk about that exam for a moment. What, um, what is that sucker? What, what are they asking us on there? Um, well, I, I, I'd have to tell you what my experience was. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I think it's changed a little since then, but uh, back when I was taking the exam, there was two, lev two, two separate exams. Mm -hmm. One was called a qualifying exam, the other was called a professional exam. Okay. Qualifying exam was, I believe, two full days. Wow. Two or three days. Mm -hmm. um, and it had uh, questions on architectural history, mm -hmm. uh, structural engineering, um, mechanical systems, and then at the end of it, you actually had to design a building. Oh my gosh. And you'd sit there, <laughs> you'd sit there, you walk in, and, and it's like 8 o'clock in the morning, and here's what we want you to design. It's a police station or something like wow. that. And okay. it's, just, it's just from there till the end of the day, I think it was a 12 hours, wow. you get to 12 hours and it's, and it's like nonstop. Okay. And, and you just, <laughs> there's paper <laughs> flying all over the place. And I don't even know how they do it now. I th they'd probably do it with a computer, but okay. back in the day it was all hand drawn. So there was just mountains and mountains wow. of paper like up to here. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. So that was, that was the part that was the, the most critical. Mm -hmm. If you pass that, uh, pretty much the rest the of it was just book learning type okay. stuff. So that's a two day exam, correct? Yeah, I think it was two, I think maybe two days of the technical and then the third day was that 12 hour design exam. Okay. And that was the qualifying exam. Okay. Then I think six months later I took what's called a professional exam, which was I think just two days. Okay. And the des that exam, and it's all multiple choice, mm -hmm. um, except for that design marathon. Okay. Um, no essay questions on there. No so. essay questions. <laughs> okay. uh, although we did have to do some structural engineering uh, where you'd have to actually do calculations. Oh, okay. It's still multiple choice, but you'd have to do the calculations to figure out what the right answer was. Do some math. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so anyway, so the professional exam, that, that I, they actually had a building that was, let's say, the, and back in, I don't even remember the, the name of the building, but it was some corporate office mm -hmm. building. And they just had the plans and started just asking questions. So okay. what about this? Why is that? How is this? Where is that? Wow. Why is this? Why is this going this way? Okay. And so you had to answer all those questions. So it was more like giving you a project and asking you why it is the way it is. And it sounded like you, you needed the internship. You needed at least the four years to be eligible to take the exam. Um, how would one go about finding a licensed architect? Just open up the phone book, or? Well, I <laughs> when I got out of school was was the recession of 1974. Wow. Uh, okay. And they, they, they had the oil embargo, and there was and and I literally took the phone book and a map, and I put dots on every location of every architect in Los Angeles. Oh wow, okay. And then sat there on the kitchen table and designed how I was going to go about passing wow. out resumes and, and okay. looking for a job. Okay. And I must have seen a couple hundred, three or four hundred, I don't know. Wow. Nobody was hiring back then. Okay. Nobody. So um, so I ended up working in a department store, you know. Oh, really? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> For about eight months until s somebody finally called Is that right? off, off one of my resumes that I left and I got my first job. Okay, um, before you, you took the exam, can, is that a paid position or is that a, a free sort of? They have interns intern. now that they don't pay. I, uh, I was always a paid draft. You're always paid, okay. Cool, so, so it's a job. Yeah, but now oh, very cool. Now you can actually get internships while you're in school, mm -hmm. like during the summer. Okay. And they, I don't think they pay. Um, okay. but, but that experience, I think, adds to it. And I think they have a, since I was back when I was young, since then they have a whole new intern program now that's a little more organized than when I was doing it. Okay. Let's switch gears for a minute. Um, take us through a typical day as an architect. 
Uh, wow, typical day. <laughs> typical day could be atypical. Okay. And uh, and which which is part of what makes it great. Okay. Is that it's not like you're not coming to the office and bean counting for eight hours and going home. Mm -hmm. It's you know, you come in one morning and you're designing uh, the floor plan, trying to figure out how to get something done. Okay. And the next day. Uh, you're going out to a job site to, to, to see some construction, to, there's a problem, and it's your job to go out there and go, no, we're going to move this wow. column from here to there okay. and, f and move this over here and we'll fix that. So you might be out in the field for the whole day. That's um, interesting. If you made plans to, say, draft the extra room, um, it's not, uh, it doesn't end the relationship once you submit the plans. It no. could be ongoing through the construction process. Yeah. Oh, Definitely. wow. Okay. And actually, I prefer that, is, okay. is to uh, go out and visit the job site, see mm -hmm. how, and, and most, and actually, standard contracts usually say that I'm going to go out there and check out what you're doing, just okay. to make sure you're doing it the way sure. my drawings show. So, okay. Um, and contractors will call, and they'll say, well, this doesn't line up with that, and this is going this way instead of that way. And, okay. and so, used to be I'd have to get in the car and drive. Now you can just email photographs. So oh, it's, interesting. It's a little less time consuming to be driving around than it used to be. When an architect, uh, say, drafts plans to uh, build a house, does he need to file those documents with the city clerk? Mm -hmm. He does. Yeah, not the city clerk, the building department. The building department. Okay, let's discuss that for a moment. Um, once you, is it the big long papers that you roll up and you, yep. you actually take them down there and, and yep. what are they doing to them? They're making sure that it's sound or? Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll go, th well, they, they basically look at it to see that it complies with the building code. Okay. So, uh, how would they do that exactly? They've got those books. Okay. And they go through those books just like I do and make sure I've caught everything I'm going to catch. And okay. So, hopefully, I have, but. It's rare that you go through a, a plan check process without some something that they find that you didn't put in. So the building department, they're architects as well. They're they're generally engineers. Okay. Um, I, hmm. I don't know if I've ever met it. Uh, or at least <laughs> none none that admitted they were architects. <laughs> okay. But uh, it sounds uh, like what you're doing is outside the scope of of their intellect. Um, well, you got to remember, they're not, they're not, they're not looking at the plans and saying, boy, I don't know if I'd have used that cabinet <laughs> hardware. They, they want to make sure you're going to, that the person's going to get out in the fire. Okay. Okay. They're okay. interested in, in, is the exit width wide enough? Okay. The code says you have to have a four foot wide or a five foot wide or okay. whatever, how long the aisle is mm -hmm. or how wide it is. They, they, they go, okay, yeah, you got it. Okay. So, so if I'm designing a building that has uh, 500 people in it, mm -hmm. then the exit requirements for that building are different okay. than if you have 30 people. Sure, okay. Because when, as, as we saw in that, in that fire in Brazil, mm -hmm. right? You don't have enough exits, so they're blocked, mm -hmm. people die. I see, so, okay. So, so they're primarily interested in that kind of stuff. Okay. It, it's, it, and it's, there's all kinds of things that, that are in the building code that they're looking for. Okay, more of an elementary type of an inquiry. Just, the, okay. they're interested in just the sort of the nuts and bolts of the building. Okay. Um, when we go down there, um, after you draft, um, I'm curious, how long would it take if I want to build a five bedroom house from the dirt up to the top, how long would it take you to draft? That, the, those plans <laughs> <laughs> could could go fast, could go slow. Really, a lot of it depends on uh, what the clients are looking for mm -hmm. and uh, what you're trying to achieve for them, mm -hmm. and and what the deadline is. Okay, so, so ballpark, uh, an average house could take a year. A year? Wow. Could take a okay. year. Okay. Wow, that's a I huge mean, to project get it, then. To get it all the way from inception to permit. Wow, okay, so, so one job could theoretically employ an architect for an entire year or more. Oh, it could. I mean, the, like the Getty Center, Richard Meyer worked on it for, I forget, like a decade. Oh my gosh, okay. So, wow. I mean, he had other things, obviously, he's mm -hmm. a big office, but, but you, could, you could work on a project 
a single project all by yourself for wow. years. Oh, that's interesting. To. Okay. Um, but more of the simple say, room additions or something might take maybe yeah, a couple like, weeks or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I, and again, it's, it's whatever that... The, the complexity. The complexity. The, okay. Um, once you, you've drafted the, the, the documents, you take them downtown. Do you email those or do you actually go down there with a no, they piece actually, of paper? Yeah, they still have. Okay. And they stamp those things or...? They'll, they take them in and once you, once they're ready to approve it, it's a mm -hmm. big fat rubber stamp. Okay. Approved. And you have to pay a fee to them for. Uh, I don't, but the, owner, <laughs> the owners do. <too. laughs> I'm curious, how, how much is that? Is that fee generally? Is, is it on a, a percentage? It's a know? percentage of valuation. So, this, okay. so generally speaking, a city will come up with a uh, type of construction. Let's say it's a house. Mm -hmm. They'll say, okay, a house is worth arbitrarily. They'll say a hundred dollars a foot. Okay. And the permit, the plan check and permit fees are based on a percentage of that. And I can't mm -hmm. remember what they are, like one or two percent, something okay. like that. So uh, on top of that, there's school fees, mm -hmm. uh, which are like th upwards of four dollars a square foot now wow. for new construction. So you can add a thousand square feet and pay four thousand dollars to the state of California for schools. Wow. Okay. So. Interesting. Um, okay. Still on a typical day. Um, so you, you generally show up work Monday through Friday, or are you working weekends? Or? I, 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 since I work for myself, I'm my own boss, and okay. I come and go whenever I want, but I generally put 45, 50-hour weeks in. Well, currently, what projects are you working on right now? Um, well, the one I'm working on right now is a uh, multi-use office residential project down in Carlsbad. Oh, okay. So, That's um, interesting. It's 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 in the old historic village of Carlsbad. Okay. So it's, yeah. It's like the uh, the last vacant lot. Okay. It used to be a gas station, I think. So All right. now it's going to end up being like a three-story building. Wow. You had mentioned you had finished some projects recently. What what were you working on? Uh, I was working on a house out in the oh. valley. Okay. About an eight thousand square foot house. Let, let's talk about that. What what did you do at the eight thousand square foot house? Um, Start from start from. I mean, we actually started it about five or six years ago. Wow! And uh, uh, some personal issues. With the owner <coughs> was ill, and so it was delayed a little bit. But uh, uh, we've been chugging along for all those years. And, was and it from scratch, or was it a renovation? Or? No, brand new house. Brand new, brand house. new house. Wow. So it was, actually, it was a dirt lot when you got there? It's, it was actually, there's an old house built in the 50s that, that we tore down. So okay. it's currently a vacant lot. Okay. And uh, we've been puttering around trying to get it done. And, and in the meantime, in those six years, the codes have changed a few times. They've added mm -hmm. some stuff. So there's, there's more that you do now than you used to have to do. Wow. Uh, you have to deal with things like rainwater. You can't just mm -hmm. let it go out into the street anymore. You have mm -hmm. to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot of different sort of intricacies, intricacies you need to. Does uh, an architect uh, generally start with um, the sewage and maybe the plumbing and, and the issues that are going underground before they start? It's, it's part of the preliminary process. Mm -hmm. the, you, you sort of do a fact-finding mm -hmm. to find out, okay, do I have a sewer? Do I have electrical? Do I have gas? Do I have, do I have all these utilities? Oh, and if cool. I don't, that will affect what I design. Okay. Okay. And, and then, then, then <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you will also find out from the city what the height limits are and what the setbacks okay. are and, and, you know, how many square feet can you build. Okay. So there's, there's a, you sort of start in the beginning and sort of figure out what what the box is that you can do. Mm -hmm. there's, there's X number of square feet, it can be this high and it can only go that wide. Wow. And uh, once you figure that out, then you, then you take the program that the owner gives you, mm -hmm. like they'll say, okay, I want four bedrooms, I want, a, I want a living room, I want a family room, I want a billiard parlor and I want a man cave or <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> And, and that's what you do. And wow. so then you take, you take that program that they give you and the, the box that you have on the mm -hmm. site, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and you st and you say, okay, you know, Try to make it here fit, we go. Right? You know, okay. and you start, and and you have to go to the site. You got to look at the site, and you got to say, well, if it's uh, a summer afternoon and we just finished dinner, wouldn't it be nice to have a balcony right there, looking at that view? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So so, and these are all the things you will learn in school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is they'll 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 explain all the different little intricacies of how designs, how you do things, and why people react to buildings the way they do. Okay. And uh, it's just, it's, it's a fascinating, oh, wow, that is absolutely cool. fascinating profession in terms of the psychology involved, mm -hmm. why people react to certain buildings positively and others negatively, yeah. and, and why, why is there a, a, a little park that nobody goes to, and there's other parks that everybody goes to. Yeah, that's Why is that? Okay. You know, and, mm -hmm. and you can sort of look at it and you can say, oh, okay, well, it's down here and it goes down the hill and it's cold because it's in shadow. Or okay. All those reasons. These are all the things you learn in school mm -hmm. and you pick up as you go through life and you start, and, you, and, and, and all of us, we, mm -hmm. whenever we go somewhere, we go, this is such a nice place. Mm -hmm. You know, well, my job as the architect is to is to is to understand why it's a nice place. Oh wow! Okay. Okay, and and my wife, my wife, it used to drive her crazy. Is is, you know, wherever I wherever we went, I'm I'm like, oh, look how they <laughs> look how they did that. And yeah, that's like, wow. Huh. <laughs> that's an interesting way of doing that. I never thought of that. So, and that's. That's what we do. That's wow. what an architect. An architect is like constantly. That every everything we do and everything we see, just goes into your head and becomes part of the puzzle. Wow, I love it. Very so. cool. When you uh, typically start a project, do you do you spend maybe a, a full day a full day there or um, a large amount of, of time considering elements? Oh yeah, yeah. Would go? absolutely. And okay. the, and the bigger the project, the more time you spend, sort of sitting out there doing nothing, just walking right. around. Okay. I have, a, I have a client that has a project out in Apple Valley, and uh, I spent a whole day just puttering around, wow. taking pictures, taking it in, huh? standing on the rock and going, hmm, that would be an interesting place to have a, yeah. you know, and, and wow. you know, do I want to put a restaurant here? Do I want to put Very a, cool. and, those are the kind of things that that you know you, you start out at the very beginning, and you mm -hmm. and you try and you try and say, okay, if this is going to be a really cool place, what do I have to do? Mm -hmm. You know, and then sometimes the economics make it hard. Mm -hmm. You know, and everybody everybody complains sometimes. They'll say, oh, this building's so terrible. Well, a lot of it's economics. You just can't you can't spend the money and get it back. Right, and okay. and so you have to be mindful of the client. The client's not building it just for fun. You mm -hmm. know, most of the time they're doing it because they want to turn a profit and they want okay. to do something. I mean, sometimes there's these people that are just like, I want to build this monument to myself. And right. Okay. That's a different idea. But most of the time, people are designing buildings to sell them, mm -hmm. or to live in them, mm -hmm. or or something. That that money is an issue. Mm -hmm. So. Do you, um, you ever consider um, the highest and best use of a property where you're actually advising the client on what might be a better route to go um, as far as what their plans were? Maybe it's not th the best way to design something. You ever put in your... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you can do that. I, I, I would probably say that m that's not the, the kind of thing architects are, I mean, not that we're not able to do it. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not a number crunching guy that would mm -hmm. say, okay, if we did this and we did that, it mm -hmm. would be a uh, a much better use of stuff. I'm, okay. I'm I'm I mean I if you if you come to me and you say I have this thing, what can we do? Mm -hmm. uh, we can examine all the different options options okay. and say, okay, maybe it's going to be an entertainment complex. Okay. And what are the problems associated with that? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I would be more, most architects would be the people that would be feeding information to a developer mm -hmm. to say, well, if you do that, you're going to need you know, 6,000 parking spaces and right, okay. that's going to cost you this much money. Do you really want to do that? Mm -hmm. So, we're sort of 
architects are sort of feeding information to the developer and let the developer is the one's going to make the decision. Okay. And they're, they're, they're basically saying, okay, what am I going to do with this project? And, and, and like you say, they'll say, okay, well, I want to do the highest and best use. And okay, okay highest and, the highest and best use might be the most expensive building you ever built. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you want to do that? <laughs> okay. Right. So, so my job is, and is to say, if you, if you do what you think is the highest and best use, it's going to cost you probably this much money, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to have this many parking spaces, okay. and and that might not be a money maker, mm -hmm. even though it's the highest. I guess that would be the thing. It would be the highest use, but not the best use. Is there an area of architecture that that you prefer, uh, maybe residential as opposed to commercial, or building restaurants you know, instead of building? My, I'm I'm the sort of person that that always wants to be doing the thing I'm not doing now. Okay. And, and, and it's part of the reason I love architecture is that, is that if, you're doing, if you're doing houses, and you're doing, I'm designing a house, I'm designing a house, and I, and I went through a period where I designed probably five or six big houses in a row. Mm -hmm. And I was done with doing houses. Really? I'm just like, okay, I get that. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm not interested in doing another house. Okay. And something will come along and it'll be an office building. And, oh, okay. and I'm like, oh, now I'm happy. Now I'm, I get something new. Yeah. And what's great about doing architecture is it could be something as simple as a, I mean, I've done, I've designed uh, uh, just a little tea house for a woman in Santa Monica. Just all I want is like a, I don't want, it ended up being like 12 by 12 little tea room. Wow, yeah, that is small. And, um, and we design it, get all these okay. little intricate little sort of uh, Japanese details. And, oh, wow. Okay. And, and, and that little project took as much brain power as doing a really big project because it's just an intimate little space that, mm -hmm. that she had a specific thing in her head that she wanted. Yeah. And so that kind of stuff is, is you know, so the, the macro of, of the big, you know, urban planned development versus just, just an inv individual little room all by itself can be as big a challenge yeah. as, as, as a whole shopping center. Wow. It sounds like um, from a layperson's perspective that drafting uh, the plans for a commercial building would be a little easier than doing it for a residential property. Um, with all the you know the the tiny you yeah, know you know it, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve and what mm -hmm. the what the what the owners are looking for. Mm -hmm. So you know you, you get a, a design like pick something like uh, City Walk. Mm -hmm. okay, that's okay. a good example. Uh -huh. There's a lot of stuff going on at City Walk. Okay. A lot of stuff it takes mm -hmm. a lot of time. A lot of and a lot of people spend a lot of time mm -hmm. just going you know noodling the little details and. And okay. saying, okay, what's that going to look like? And so it depends and individually upon the project. Yeah, right? and there are other projects. Okay. You know, if you're just going to do a shopping center that's got a, a grocery store and a and a and a pharmacy or something, and you know, then those, like you say, those are, go fairly quickly and they're not that big of a deal. Good deal. Let's switch gears for a minute. Let's talk about money. Um, any idea what a first year associate can expect to make ballpark um, as an architect today? Um, I would guess probably around, and again, this, uh, uh, part of the problem with, the, with a person that just got out of school is they don't know much, mm -hmm. and so they're not real, I, I hate to say it, they're not real useful. Okay. And, and I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, and it used to be, reality. Bit, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and uh, but at the same time, the process has to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's like when I was, a, you know, I was a kid, they'd say, you know, well, you don't have any experience. And I go, well, that's because you haven't hired me yet. <laughs> if you that's hire me, <laughs> now we're talking. All right. So uh, a lot, of, and that's why I think they, a lot of people have these intern programs mm -hmm. where they're sort of unpaid. Mm -hmm. and, but, but once you start becoming uh, more experienced, you become more valuable. Mm -hmm. And I would guess if you're probably Three four years out of school, you're probably going to be making 
forty to fifty thousand, I would think. Okay, something like you're that. You're a sole practitioner here at Bruckman Design, is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, but before your career here, you worked for a firm of architects. I've worked for, whew, I worked for probably five or six different architects. Well, it sounds like a first year associate can make between forty and fifty thousand first year. Something like that. Okay, um, now. It sounds like um, it might be a good idea to, to go out and, and get a job with a firm to learn, not yeah. to mention. Yeah. Um, and you probably, you might not be making that kind of money to start out with. Architecture's never been a, jo uh, a profession that pays great. Really? Okay. And, and, you know, it was always, it's always one of those things that you, most architects, I think, will tell you that, you know, we sort of get the bug and, 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 it's only like afterwards we go. What do you What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean we're not We're not We're not going to make a billion dollars? Oh wow! Okay. And and it really becomes a labor of love. And it's it's it's. I would tell you. I would if you ask ten architects, I'll bet you nine of them are more interested in being an architect than they are in the money. Oh okay, that's interesting. So I'm. That brings me to my next question. Um, what do you love about this career? Um. The pros of being an architect. The pros of being an architect, uh, and and the reason I got into it is that it's it's a unique profession in that it gives you the ability to uh, be a designer, mm -hmm. to have a vision about something, and and design things that are that are are like they're like music. It's like mm -hmm. painting. It's it's Art. an architectural yeah. expression. But at the same time, it, it also is extremely technical. Mm -hmm. So you have this sort of you know, left side, right side fight of your brain where, where you, you, get, you get to work out both sides. Okay. And so, so there are parts of it where you're, you're just sitting there noodling you know, structural details and things like that. And then there's mm -hmm. other times when you're designing flowing, you know, oh, I'm going to do this, or, or, or doing color selections, and, mm -hmm. and so what's, what's great about it for me is, is that it's so varied, mm -hmm. that there's so many things to do okay. that, and, and, you know, maybe I just have a short attention span, I don't know, <laughs> but it's like, I'm just never, I'm never bored from it. Okay. And, I mean, you know, sometimes you sort of go, oh, boy, another day of this. But it doesn't last long because mm -hmm. there's always going to be something happening. There's, there's going to be, it's like, okay, that didn't work. We got to design a brand new whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And, and you just walk in the next morning and you're just sitting there and pull out a piece of paper and start sketching. And you go, hmm, works, doesn't work, wow. throw it away, start over. Cool. You know, you know what I see uh, the pros of this this career. Um, you know, one is the power that comes with this. I mean, you can look at something like maybe your own property and say, you know what, let's get started. Let's build something on here. This would, you know, maybe even do the work yourself. Um, yeah, the knowledge that. that comes with that, uh, mm -hmm. the skills that you have for for your own for your own sort of personal enjoyment and. Yeah, I'm actually designing my own house. Is right that now. right? Wow, that's very cool. And I have to tell you, I'm like the worst client ever. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I can't decide. You know, oh, it's right? like okay. every once in a while you get a client that can't decide what they want, mm -hmm. and I'm like the worst. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's like you can do whatever you want. Yeah. You're the client, right? Right, okay. And it's like, oh, do I like that? Well, this week I do. Okay. You know, <laughs> next week it might be something else. So. The other thing I noticed about your career um, is, do you ever drive by uh, maybe a property that you designed and, and maybe there's a family living in there and, you know, what satisfaction that must hold for, for someone like yourself that you're making somebody's lives better and healthier? And I, I actually enjoy that. I, yeah. there, there's something to be said for just, and, and not, really, not really big business, it's, mm -hmm. it's just uh, a family. Mm -hmm. that wants to add on to their house mm -hmm. and they've got a limited budget and, and you, you're trying to get the best for them mm -hmm. that uh, that their house can give them wow yeah. and and uh changing lives for for the better changing the world for the better it's pretty neat very it's cool neat. anything not so fabulous about this career any of the, the cons that come with this architectural um probably 
I think frustration. Really? Um, okay. In that uh, there's sometimes you, you have a really neat idea that you want to do something and there's not the budget for it mm -hmm. or, or the client doesn't have the vision you've got mm -hmm. and um, that can be frustrating. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, when I was a kid, I used, we used to sit around and drink coffee and, and say, well, why are all these terrible buildings? exist in the city hmm. you know and and you know when we get out there it's all going to be different <laughs> but the reality is that there are there there are people that that don't have enough money to do mm -hmm. the best things mm -hmm. and or, or don't like I said don't have the vision mm -hmm. and don't care what you're trying to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you'll give them a drawing and they'll just completely ignore it, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and you'll go out to the job site and you go, boy, that's not at all what I was thinking it was going to be, wow, be okay. and because they just ignore some of the details that make it important. Mm -hmm. And that's a frustration. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe the fluctuating real estate market might have an impact on an architect does. Uh, to finance. It maybe does. Um, and that that's another problem mm -hmm. with architecture is that it's, 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 tied to the construction industry mm -hmm. and it can be cyclical. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be times when it's not a fun time out there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, in this past couple, three years has been one of those times. There's people that have had some trouble. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it um, is a little frustrating sometimes mm -hmm. because you, it's hard to, it's hard to plan. It's not like you're going to go get a job that, that, you know, 30 years later you retire and you got your pension. Mm -hmm. Just architecture isn't that way. Mm -hmm. It's a very, it's 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 a fluctuating business, mm -hmm. and you know there are some companies that are large enough and stable enough that you can go to work for them and stay there for forever. And mm -hmm. I know people that have done that. I would guess that's a m maybe ten percent of the business. Mm -hmm. There's okay. ninety percent of architects that are probably less than 10 man offices mm -hmm. and that kind of size is is dangerous mm -hmm. when there's when there's downturns in the economy okay because it doesn't take long for all of a sudden a 10 man office to be a two man office wow and as i was saying when i was looking for a job back in the recession of 74 i literally would walk into architects offices and the two partners would be sitting there playing gin <laughs> You know, and, and they look at me like, you're looking for a job? <laughs> so are we. Oh my gosh, okay. So that's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's a problem. The business is not a stable business. It's not like we're, 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 make, we're turning out widgets mm -hmm. and, and, you know, every week the world needs 10,000 widgets. Okay. You know? Interesting. There well, overall, it sounds like a, a, a beautiful career um, with the, the pros definitely outweigh any, any cons. The architectural game. Yeah, the the I, I can't even uh, like I said, except for the the fluctuations in mm -hmm. in work. Other than that, mm -hmm. I I don't have anything bad to say about it. We always end with a funny story or something interesting that, that may have happened to you as an architect that you can share with our audience. <laughs> anything. Uh, besides the exciting uh, <laughs> surroundings of the. The architect's um, office. I, I I I can't think of anything. Maybe more something more satisfaction based, um, where you you put a family into a home or. Um, uh, I actually the, the probably the the most fun we ever had was uh, design. We designed a Nike uh, apparel store. Oh wow! Okay for the 84 Olympics. Okay. And they were here, uh, here in LA. Here in LA. Yeah, okay. And uh, that was pretty cool because they flew us up and we met the head guy at Nike. Oh, wow. And uh, That's exciting. And, and what was fun about it was that the Olympics were starting at, a, you know, whatever day the opening ceremonies were. Okay. We had to be finished. Is that right? We okay. Had, the building had to be done that day. Wow. And And of course, they called us late and, and uh, 
So it was, uh, it was frantic, but it was kind of fun. Wow, okay, so, good deal. Do you have any advice for young people you want to share before we wrap it up? Uh, if you're interested in architecture, um, it, you, you probably want to be, cre you're a creative person, and you're probably uh, technically somebody that uh, likes math, and I use geometry every single day. So, you know, I use physics, so, so you probably want to uh, uh, stick to those kinds of uh, technical things, mathematics, engineering, uh, and, but at the same time, you get to go, go take some drawing classes, go have some fun just sketching things. And uh, between those two, you could have a career out of it. Good deal. Donald Bruckman, architect Donald Bruckman, thank you <laughs> so much for joining us today. We appreciate that. Very good. This is Freddie Cochran signing out another edition of California Careers. Take care. Well, there you have it, how to become an architect. I want to thank Donald Bruckman for joining us today. Here in Redondo Beach, California, this is Freddie Cochran for California Careers. Take care.